change for the whole world. Every road that I've taken leads to my regret. Well, I don't know if I'm gonna make it here. Nothing to do. Big mighty welcome to you. Welcome to Elevation TV Network, home of the gifted, the one and only gifted. Yes, Elevation TV Network. If you are new to the network, we are a global network where we united kingdom builders, the movers, the shakers, to show people a real definition of the heart of God. And that's why we come on twice a week, every single week, to unite the body of Christ. That's why we're here. Yep, and I'm your host, Shani Simon Godfrey, and we have a phenomenal, I mean, we have a true prophet test of the living God that will be coming on tonight, and I'm just excited to have her. Yes, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. It's going to be phenomenal. She's going to come on, and trust me, I know she's a blessing, and I'm just excited to be here tonight. Hello, hello. Oh. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> How are you, woman of God? I am blessed. I am so happy. So happy to see you. I'm here. I'm here. It's been a task. I've had a long day, but praise God, I oh. am here. And I am so elated, ecstatic. I'm just humbled to be here because, wow, little old me, little old me. <laughs> little old me. So thank God. <laughs> oh, God, my God. Guys, we going to pray and we going to dive in because when I say I am just, my heart is just so happy to have Prophetess Baker with us tonight. So let me pray so we can start. <laughs> Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before your presence tonight, Lord, on yes. one accord mm. for your name's sake. Lord, we know that it's not by any accident, Lord God. It's not a coincidence why we are here tonight together. And Lord, as we tap into the heart of God on this broadcast tonight, Lord, I ask you to just be in the midst. You say where the two and the three gathered, you shall be in the midst. And Lord, here's the two, and we are calling on your name, Lord God, that as we enter into this new week, week that will enter it on a solid foundation with us, which is the rock of Jesus Christ. So Lord, let it be all of you and none of me in Jesus name. Amen. 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 God, I'm so happy. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so prophetess Baker, how are you? I am wonderful. I am wonderful. How are you? I am happy. I'm blessed. Hi, Tanya. It's nice to see you. Thank you for watching. She's awesome. <laughs> She's awesome. I am so happy to have you. Can you introduce yourself to us? Sure, gladly. Hello, Facebook world and social media world. I am Prophetess Marie Baker. I am out of Atlanta, GA. Ah, I am the proud mother of three wonderful and beautiful children. And yes, I am also, oh man, I have three of the most wonderful, beautiful, oh, I, I could just go on and on when it comes to my grandbaby. So yes, I am a mother of three and I'm a grandmother of three. Amen. Amen. Guys, listen, 
this prophet is here and you know why i love the gifted the humble <laughs> she's like yes i'm a mom grandma yes. sir yes. <laughs> yes. my first ministry is to my yes family. yes my oh, but yes i am so humble but yes um mother of three grand children that oh god they call me sugar sugar i'm not grandma i'm sugar sugar or glamour so <laughs> <laughs> yeah she is a you know what she wear many hats she wear yes. many hats and we're gonna yes. talk about a few of those hats tonight because listen let's talk about judah's dove wow because okay. You know what? Even the logo, I'm like, man, this is powerful. So let's talk about Judah's Dove. Guys, she is a, a entrepreneur, a prophetess, kingdom builder, mother, grandmother. I mean, mentor. She preach. She teach. The works. Full package. Yeah. So we're going to talk about some of those hats tonight. And she <laughs> has a ministry called Judah's Dove. So we're going to talk about that. So tell me about Judah's Dove. Okay, Judah Dove, first and foremost, to give you some insight and background on Judah Dove. Um, my background is law enforcement, public safety. I've been in, like you said, I've been in those arenas as well. But in doing so, um, hmm, I first was a victim of rape and molestation. So first of all, let's, let's just make all of that clear. But the thing was, it, it just took for the Lord to heal me, set me free, and deliver me. So right. with that being said, um, as I stated, my background is law enforcement. And working in law enforcement, I was locking up folks that were violating our children. But as fast as I could lock them up, it seemed like it was a revolving door. They were mm -hmm. in and mm -hmm. out. And I just could not phantom, and I just could not digest you know, what was happening. And it was years ago when I first came to Atlanta after being raped twice as a teenager. And trust me, I know who I am and I know whose I am. And even at that time, I knew, but I just could not for the life of me understand why our Heavenly Father, my God, would allow something such as this to occur. God, to happen right. to me. And with that happening, I continued to even ask God why. I went from why to why me, and I grew in grace when it comes to ministry, but I still had those questions in the back of my mind as to why he would allow. Why weren't you there? Why didn't you save me from, you know, from this? So right. um, it took until I moved to Atlanta. Once I got to Atlanta, I'm always on my face, or on the wall praying, and I continue to ask God why. Right, right. I never got an answer truly at first. And from there, it went to why me? So right. I'll never forget it. He said to me once, he said, why my son? Many having to right. die on the cross. I said, oh, God. So it oh. went, yet still that did not stop me. And I'm like, right. okay, I know he died on this cross for our sins. And right. I started thinking, what did I do to cause this? you know, thing to yeah. happen mm -hmm. to me. Did I, did I do something to provoke it? What, but, okay. I continue to ask okay. until one Friday night, early Saturday morning, I know precisely it was 323 in the morning that he woke me. He awakened me from my sleep and I got up and I got on my face and he told me, he said, you are now grown enough in your spirit, huh? Yes, Shabbat, that I can answer you. Mm. He said, everything that you've ever gone through in your life or will go through or even encounter, he says, not about you. My God. He says, not about you. It's, it's, it's for someone else. Mm. And I had to think about that thing. But when I tell you, when I got the justification of that thing and the revelation from that thing, I knew what God was saying to me. And from there, he took me into to the dust. He gave me mm. the name. He gave me the vision, and then he gave me the provision. Bible wow. three, everything gave me the work. I did it all myself. Oh, my God. And wow. I've been doing it now ever since 2009, meaning we counsel young women and, and 
you know, I they're pushing hard for men, but I told them this is God gave me the vision first for women. But I'm like, but <laughs> women and children that have been raped, molested, sexually exploited. Wow. This is who we are and what we do. We counsel, we mentor. Um, I myself. I reach beyond the pulpit. Yes, I preach, I pray, I prophesy. Wow. But the greatest gift for me and the greatest joy is going to someone's rescue. I, 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 go, I leave my house sometime, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, going oh down on the streets of Atlanta, some of the most dangerous areas and streets in Atlanta. But, of course, I'm not afraid. As I would always say, I'm <laughs> armed and I'm dangerous. <laughs> with the Holy Ghost. And I, 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 I say that people still <laughs> with me at all times. But. I'm, I'm just that woman that I'm going down and I'm going to get your child back. Anyone that I can, I will snatch them back from the clutches in the hands of the devil, of the Hasatan. You won't have them on my watch, not this one. My God. So this is what it is for me when it comes to community outreach and service. It's not just about that pulpit. It's beyond, oh the, it's beyond the pulpit in the community, community service. Right. What are you doing right. in the community? And this is who we are when it comes to the community. We serve yes. women and children that have experience, and we call them survivors. We don't call them victims, but we call oh them God. survivors of any type of sexual abuse. Yes, my God. You know what? I really love that ministry. I, and I remember that when we spoke... Because, guys, it's not a lot of gifteds that I speak to before we come on. And I remember when we spoke and you were telling me about that vision. It's, I mean, it's a powerful vision. It's a powerful ministry. Because when you're talking about someone that been molested and been raped and been through it, I mean, you're looking at a product of it. You know, I've, I've been there, done that. I know about the emotions that come through it. And you said it. You know who you are. And you know who you are, but there's a piece of you that you can't really connect until God himself yes. has to identify that yes. and he's for you. Yes. So, wow, my God, it's powerful what you're doing. And then you mentioned you go back into the street and get these yes, women. How, how do you even begin to do that for someone that God is laid in on their heart and they feel nervous about it or scared? Okay, first and foremost, let me say this. I don't know who's listening at the sound of my voice. Please make sure that you're called to this. Right. Please. Because first and foremost, as I said, to go out in the street, first of all, it's dangerous because mm -hmm. I have been accosted and I have been approached oh, by the pimps, the Johns. I've been threatened. But it doesn't bother me because the key is, as I said, I'm covered by the blood of the lamb, mm -hmm. as well as when they find out my background. People talk and they let them know that's not what you want. She may be mm -hmm. glamorous, pretty from the eyesight, but mm -hmm. no. I don't play the radio when it comes to the babies. That's don't right. you touch a child, but make sure that you're called to mm -hmm. this and called to do this. If not as a counselor, a mentor, uh, okay. But if you're not called to, to really go out in the streets and pull them off, you have to be careful when it comes to that. Right. But me, myself, I know I've been called to that. I ran the streets and something that was supposed to take me out of here and kill me, God kept me in so the same boldness that I had when I was in the world. I have that same boldness to go back out there. And I let them know I'm not afraid of you. And I'm going to take back what God told me to take back and bring back, which is that child. So to begin with, make sure you call to it. Second of all, uh, what I mean call to it, this is something that a lot of people can't handle. Right. There are a lot of times from just snatching them off the streets, there are times that I find myself at one of the children's hospital or one of the local hospitals mm -hmm. that I have to watch a rape kit being performed on a child because the parent can't get through it or the parent is not a around and a lot of people can't handle this. Right. So you have to make sure mm -hmm. that this is something that you're called to. And I know God called me to this because I know, as I said, I know what I experienced. I know what I went through. You're going to be, uh, how would I say, met with resentment. Um, everything in the world is going to be thrown at you, not just by the world, but by the, the survivors themselves. And wow. they will tell you, if you have not gone through what I have gone through, you can't tell me nothing. Me nothing no, and, right. and trust me, I'm, the, I'm being very nice about in the choice of my words because they, they're not nice. 
<laughs> and you know right. for yourself, if you've mm -hmm. ever been through what we've gone through, and I'm saying it, those of you at the sound of my voice, if you, if you know that you've been through what we've been through, you know where your heart and your mind was. You were just yeah. as angry and just as bitter as we were. Yes. So with that being said, if you are assured that God has called you to do this, meaning, and I'll say this and let me make it clear. First of all, if you've been a victim yourself and now you are a survivor, please assure yourself, not just us, assure yourself first that you have been healed, my God, set free, and delivered first. Because mm. if you don't have all three, I better say that. Mm. You can't help Jesus. anybody else if you're still wounded. We don't need any wounded warriors out there. You better say we it. Need you wholeheartedly, because this is what it's going to take. Because they can see, they mm -hmm. can also see. So mm -hmm. we don't have time oh for God. you breaking down and weeping and crying, you know, because, mm, mm, oh God. Mm. Mm. Jesus. So you got to make mm -hmm. sure, first of all, that you've been healed, set free, and delivered from whatever it is that plagues you. If it's rape, if it was molestation, if it was incest, even if you've been beaten, My battered, God. you have mm. to have the total deliverance in order to help somebody else, to reach back and help someone else. And I can assure you, because so many of you sit on these pews at these churches, wounded. Right. You're wounded. You're talking. Mm-hmm. And you're wounded, and you're sitting there as a pew rider because you're Jesus. in fear that somebody's mm. going to see or recognize that you have been a victim of rape, molestation, incest. But let me tell you something. If you've, been, if you've encountered it, and you went through it, and you came out of it, and it didn't kill you, God delivered you for a reason. Right. And mm. if you're not there, please, if you're not there, get some help. Seek someone, go to someone and tell them, I need some help. I, mm. I need some counseling. I need someone to talk to. Because many of them come to me. When they come to me, they're so broken that they're, they, they're, they, they're wanting to take themselves out. My they're God. They're speaking about killing themselves, about suicide and different things. Right. Right. And this is what we're trying to prevent. As soon as it happens, because there, I, I, I'm not speaking against any other agency, but for me, it mm -hmm. takes total deliverance. You can counsel right. a person all day, but you've got but to get to it. that root of that thing. Root. you mm -hmm. got to get to the root of it. you got to pluck it up, and you got to kill it. Right. Total healing, restoration, and deliverance. Meaning, when we get through with you at Judah Dove, our desire is to have more than 80% of our survivors to turn around mm -hmm. and be a part of this same organization to each one reach one, to reach back. Right. Each one reach mm -hmm. one, reach back and grab someone that you know have gone through what you've gone through and they're suffering in the midst of it. These young girls, mm -hmm. their grades are dropping. Mm -hmm. They're dropping out of school. They're mm. running away. They're it's turning into yes. drugs, the alcohol. And then you've got to think about it. The ones that have been out there that have been um, exploited, they were introduced to the drugs and alcohol as well mm -hmm. as the sex. So mm -hmm. now, that's a whole different ballgame. Right. My and God. Who we are and what we do is total deliverance. Right. And when you think about it, not just the survivor, now you got to deal with the family. Right. Because they have to be healed, set free, and delivered. Because now this child is acting out. She's running away. I'm done. I'm tired. No, you can't give up on your child. I just don't know what to do, okay? You continue to pray, but you don't turn your back. You do everything possible to save your child. Right. So now, mom's week, dad's week, the sisters and the brothers, the siblings, well, they're going yes. through just as well. So now you got yes. a wounded family. Right. You have a totally wounded family, torn apart. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. And you said something. And one thing that I do want to share is 
when you're working and it's a lot of times based on our professions we end up especially in ministries and people change and we don't really dig deep enough to find out the why when you mm -hmm. see somebody is the perfect straight a student and it moved from an a to a d and you see that being a little bit consistent we now there there you should be sensitive enough to see what's going on they're motivated they're smiling all of a sudden they're angry those are pattern those are yes. behavior yeah. And you said it earlier when you said the why me. When you're in that why me phase, I mean, everything seemed like shut up, don't talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Isolate yourself, get away from me, don't talk to me, don't touch me, leave me alone. alone. And that's a telltale sign, even for some of the parents to let them know when your child is normally talkative and they are family oriented that they're now they want to have dinner in their room or I'm just not hungry. Something is going mm -hmm. on. Something mm -hmm. is has happened. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to your children. And when mm -hmm. they come to you, mommy, so and so is talking to me off the wall, you know, sexually. Or mommy, I was touched. Please believe your children. Please right. listen to your children. Because mm -hmm. one thing I can't say, let me say yeah. this. And, it, and I have to say this, children are born pure and innocent and they're trained and taught to lie. Right. Now, think about it. Remember, I, I, I laugh at this sometimes when, when the, uh, tell, tell them when the phone rings, tell them I'm not they're home. Lying here. <laughs> but you remember when the children would say, my mama say she's not home. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, I got in trouble for a few of those. You, you get mad with your child. You get mad with your child but you taught them to lie. Yeah. You taught them to lie. So with that being said, listen, your children, they're pure. They come here pure and innocent. And if you're not teaching them to lie, listen to your child when they're telling you because they're not lying. Mm -hmm. They're not lying to you. Something is wrong. And especially mm -hmm. if you see change mm -hmm. in your child. Mm -hmm. Right. And if you see fact. change in your child. That's a fact. We have to pay attention to that. So oh. We have to pay attention to those signs. We have to. And you hit the nail on the head because a lot of times, and um, I'm not an expert in this field, but based on patterns, behavior, and life experience, a lot of times when people are hurt, these children are hurt, it's not by a stranger. No. It's those and closest that's what, to them. They and know. that's what hurts so yeah. bad. Mm -hmm. Yes. Same people in the same house, the brother, the yes. dad, the uncle, the cousin, the mom, yes. somebody yes. that's right there. And that's yes. when, you know, that's yes. when it's a yes. real issue because now you're supposed to protect me, but not really. You're not yes. doing that. Yes. Mm. Um, oh my God. Okay. You tapped into what we call generational curses because mostly, and I've, um, throughout the years, I have experienced a, a great deal of this. And for me, when it comes to, you know, like I said, I can't call any names, but when you have someone that, how would I say, grandma experienced mm -hmm. right. and mother experienced it, mm -hmm. so now you've experienced what's been that grandma and grand uh, and mother said, don't tell no one. Pretty much, right. Keep it in the family. Uh, I got through it. I got past it. You did. She mm -hmm. did. Mm -hmm. She's mm -hmm. a wounded warrior. She's had to deal with that all of her life. My God, and you better say that. Mm -hmm. uh, she's been dealing with that all of her life. So now it's still happening. And this is where the curse comes in because, see, now this is where you're getting into the predator becoming, uh, uh, I mean, the prey becoming a predator. predator. So many, mm -hmm. now you've been, you've been victimized. And if you don't get the help that you need, then... Mm -hmm. You become a predator right. and it keeps going and going and going. And a lot of times what happens is they not only hit at home or close to home when they venture out and try to touch a stranger's child, this is when they get caught. Mm -hmm. But long as it's kept within the family and we keep the hush mouth, My God. right? but you don't understand the lives yet that you are still destroying, mm -hmm. even as uh, I would say, as I say, a surviving, what could I call it? 
you've survived it. But the thing is, it's still a wound. Right. You have a Band-Aid on the wound. It has mm -hmm. a scab on it. But underneath that scab, if you barely flick the scab, it's still full. It's festive. Right. That exactly. wound has, mm -hmm. It has not healed. Mm. My God. It has not healed. Why? First of all, as you just said, you hit the nail on the head when you said, how can Uncle Bob do what he's doing when Uncle Bob and uh, everybody else in the family, all the male in the family, should be protecting the females in the family. Right. right. But mm. if Uncle Bob is doing this, you got the root. Now, here, here's the root. What happened to Uncle Bob? Right. What happened to Uncle Bob that made Uncle Bob do this? Oh, God. Right. Oh, God. Right. Right. So then it just continues. It's a cycle. Mm -hmm. It's a cycle. And this Not is why right. we have so many wounded women in this world today. Even down, you, you, did you see how now that these movie stars, actors, um, singers, etc. Me too. Me too. The Me Too, Me movement. too. Me too. <laughs> Me too. Yes. But most of theirs is only sexual harassment. Even though no means no. And you don't touch anyone, you know. Uh, but we're speaking of physical, physical, right. forceful. Oh you know, mm -hmm. we got to talk about this thing. A lot of people, oh, they don't want to talk about it until it hits their home. And that's a lot of things, too. A lot of times mm -hmm. what I'm up against, too. I've cried for help. I, I've gotten on Facebook and I, I, I go out. I do, you know, workshops and different things and try to get people to partner with us. It's just like it goes in one ear. Oh, you know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, and you never get, uh, you never hear from them. Only until it hits mm -hmm. your home or hits very close. My God. But this mm. is something that the Hasatan, that the, the devil is using to destroy yes, the home. Oh He's using this to destroy the homes. My God. But you and know, I hate to say it, but truth be told, and to destroy the house of God. See, you just hit that. I know Holy Ghost don't show it up because I was just going to say that. I was going to say, and not only the physical home, but the church home too, because here's what happened. When you are not completely healed and delivered and you think it is, but you're not really, and you go into the house of the Lord or these people go into the house of the Lord and they're not completely healed, they go into the house of the Lord and becomes predator. Now you have the pastors, but they're not really pastors. You're pimps, but they just dress it up and say they're apostles and pastors and preachers and teachers, but they're not. They're pimps. And then they have the women in the church like Charlie's and his angels. And it could go men and women both ways. Yes. You know, that, that well, that's just what. In this hour, um, you have just as many female predators as you have male. Facts. That's a fact. True. It goes both ways. True. But again, this is something that has to be dealt with in the church as well as in our homes. Mm -hmm. It has to be dealt with. Meaning, uh, even though I, I, you know, oh, I can't God. say they won't do it, but it is my prayer that every leader, if you mm -hmm. are wo a wounded warrior, a wounded soldier, whatever call you saying that you have uh, a title and you know you have not been healed, set free, and delivered, you, you you need to get a hold of your flesh. You need to get your flesh under subjection because in this hour, it's exposure time. You better say that. It's mm. exposure time. Mm. My God. God's going to snatch the covers off of you. Jesus. One of these same little See, a lot of people fail to realize. My also, God. You can tell a child all day long, don't tell nobody, don't tell nobody, mm -hmm. but I'm telling mm -hmm. you, that done played out. You better say that. It, that done played out. My God, Jesus. They're telling. They're singing like a bird. But second mm. of all, Ooh. as I said, you need to get yourself and your flesh under subjection. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. If you say that you are who you say you are, how can, again, how can you get someone else healed, set free, and delivered from anything if you're not free yourself? That's the My blind God. leading the blind. See, prophetess, you preach and keep going. My God, I'm telling you. But you know what, too? God is God, God that's listening to the sound of my voice. We are here to elevate you. 
to breathe life back into you to reignite the fire of the living God back into you because that's why we're here twice a week now I'm going to say it like this the Lord is releasing and I mean releasing his prophets and prophetesses and evangelists and everything with the real fire of the Holy Ghost into the marketplace you might run up on the cashier at the grocery store and that's a real prophet that's going about to expose you wherever they see you at. So make sure that if you are playing with the fire of the Holy Ghost and playing with God, that now is the time for us to get it right. Now say us because I'm flesh and flesh needs yes. to die before the throne. And that's the, that's the season that we're in because I'm telling you in my profession, God have me in the middle of my job pulling people out by the door. Listen, here's what you're going through. Here's what's going on at home. Now, how are we going to fix this? And it could be there the predator or the prey. We mm -hmm. have a conversation because I have to do my job too. And I'm mm -hmm. not going to sit there and Holy Ghost is saying, go check him. This is what he's doing or go check her. This is what she's doing. And I'm there like, no, God, I'm not going to say. I'm a more, I'm more afraid of God than, than anybody else. And I'm going to address it. So with hey, that being said, <laughs> it's called accountability. And right. Is, I'm not going to have anybody's blood on my hand. Yes. I'm going to let you know where you err, where you're sinning. And the key is, in this, I, I keep telling folks, God is mm. snatching the covers off because my God is God. about to elevate a remnant of those that's going to walk mm. upright and live Jesus. holy. Ain't going to be any of this foolishness in the house of God. But they failing to realize even those spirits that they should have been freed from. But no, they so arrogant and pompous. My okay. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm. Certain things, if you know, they don't want to touch on. Why? Because you caught up in it. That's where they struggling. Mm -hmm. You got their card. That's, got the that's, ticket. That's where you struggling in it. Mm. You need to be healed set free and delivered and you can't have one without the other my god jesus hallelujah you can't my god you got to deal with that thing and if you see that you cannot get your flesh under subjection sit your happy hips down <laughs> sit down somewhere jesus. you stand in the because you're failing to realize that there are also seers on the pew it don't have to be just mm -hmm. a prophet to come up in there and, and, and like the bible Correct. says the spirit and all flesh down rebuild call up call mm -hmm. out but there are mm -hmm. fears on the pews as well in this next it. generation the next remnant of those oh, that god is going to call to the forefront the watchmen on the wall oh god Oh God. You better speak it, my God, Jesus. And you know, and I do say this, and I'm speaking for me too, because there's times when I'm in the pew and I'm sitting down and I'm serving up under somebody. And I'm telling you, we don't care if you are struggling as long as you identify it, because we are ready. We are right there like, okay, we're ready to fast and pray and help you help yourself. The problem is when everybody is hiding it and feel like nobody's seen it or they don't want to give it up if you're struggling we know we all of of, of, of sin and come short of the glory of god we know that that's not the problem the problem is you're struggling it's like i have a broken leg but i refuse to go to the doctor mm. i refuse to get it fixed i refuse but, to but take the, the key medication. is with what you just said it will heal but it won't heal proper that's right it may need a pen it needs to be mm. re rebroken or maybe break that thing and reset that yeah, thing. Yeah, reset mm -hmm. it. But it, mm, yeesh, oh, I feel Jesus right there. Mm. But that's the thing. They don't want no help. They no, want to stay in their mess. But then you caught up in mm. your mess and you're passing your mess oh, alone. Jesus, you talking Holy Ghost. Keep going, Jesus. My you're God. your mess alone. Mm. And this, oh God. Oh, mm. God. My God. See this right here? The blood's going to be on your hand. Because mm -hmm. point blank, the day and the hour shall come. What I, I, I like playing with it. What it say? Uh, G, uh, uh, I, I prayed in your name. I, I, I cast out demons. I did this. I did that. But what did he say? Depart, Depart. from you, you workers of iniquity. I know you not. Because we're going to have to stand before him in everything that we've done. Nobody's perfect, but we're supposed to be, uh, church is supposed to be about change. Yes. 
Church is supposed to be the hospital. My meaning, God. Let's stop getting it twisted. Oh, come as you are. Yes, meaning on the <laughs> inside, not the with, your, with your dress all up your tail. Mm. And then time somebody say something to you about it that uh, deacon so-and-so or elder so-and-so or bishop so-and-so or apostle so-and-so uh, had flesh problems. And then when they, uh, oh, oh God, I feel Jesus. Uh. Mm. When that thing get to rising back up in them. Okay. Mm -hmm. See, that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. We need to go back to teaching just a uh, Mm. Hmm. Mm. someone said the other day where are the church mothers they're there but I had a church mother to tell me she said baby she said prophetess we can't talk to them anymore she said because they say stuff to us and I'm looking at them like what is it mom they say it meaning uh, you can't tell me nothing or yeah, some of them do the curse thing and I'm like really but see back in the day they didn't even have to really say nothing to us. We feared the mothers of the church because we knew that they could see. And the first thing that they would do for us is send oh, our happiness to the altar. And you're not going to leave that altar until you free, until you've laid down oh, your seat. God, when Jesus. You got up, you, uh -uh, baby, get, get back down there. You're not through. You don't make, uh uh. Yeah. But someone's trying mm. to teach you. Me, myself, I love an older woman because, see, I can sit at her feet and learn something. They've been mm -hmm. through more than what I've been through. They, they're seasoned, as I call it. They're mm -hmm. seasoned. And then this hour, that's the thing. We don't want to hear truth. Tell me the truth. Baby, Jesus. you don't slip. Baby, close, My up, God. Your God. close up your, trip, your chest. Baby, put your, your dress too short. If I see mm -hmm. one more, I don't care. If I see one more praise and worship leader, get up in front of me Ooh, with their legs all oiled this, all God. up. Your dress is short, Jesus. but you pull it on it. What you pull it on that dress for? There is no more material than mm. it was when you bought it out the store. Then when you put your little stilettos on with it, it's going up even higher. But you pull it on the dress. Why? Mm. Really? Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I could testify to that. You know what? I could testify to that. And I do see like a social media fire from hell blazing about this topic and this topic is a hot topic and i'm going to talk about it because the and I, i'm going because you know what the backbone of the person that's trying that that that's doing it is going to say only god can judge me but the word of the lord said if you know that something is going to offend your brother don't do it and i'm telling you and i'm t I'm, I'm going to testify for me because it was a season of my my marriage where my husband was addicted to pornography you understand me that was <laughs> I was dealing with and that thing was ruining our life do you understand me to the point where it was blazing out of control and I would take him to church to be delivered and when I tell you that these women wasn't wearing anything to church and my husband would just be he don't want to go to church so now I'm supposed to go to the house of the Lord now I'm supposed to seek the leaders and the same leaders was naked and now he's saying I don't want nobody to be up in here counseling me or praying for me or ministering to me do you understand where I'm coming from with this and now I'm saying why he's saying I can't focus on the word because all I'm seeing when they're that when they're clapping and they're worshiping is the booty and the breast and everything and I can't focus on Jesus and I'm chikorobo sataya and see we missed the Lord for a long time and we were young in the marriage and easy, even in the middle of the marriage and it was an up and a down and I was ready to leave and they're saying but bring him to church just bring him to church just bring him to church but when he come to church he can't focus on Jesus because he's struggling. That's like a drunken man that's that's drunk with a bottle of liquor and you're going to keep giving him more liquor. He's already dying from it. What we doing? Well, this is my point exactly. Jesus. Why are you taking him to church when the church is just as bad as like you don't brought the, the world into you the church? You better say it. You better say he's it. He's supposed to be going to the church to get what? Heal? set free and delivered from the porn but the porn is in the, in the church you better and and that and that, that that 
that is when I got it. I got it real good because I was one of those. I, I used to be like, you know what? I'm just, listen, the dress is past my knee and I'm this size. So I should be able to wear something that's going to be my size. I don't know why I got to wear a dress two times bigger than my size. And I mean, when, when he broke it down to me like that, I was saying, Lord, use all of this. And I covered this up and I make sure I really cover it up because I knew if that did that to my marriage and caused so much war in my marriage and my life and heartache and brokenness and no sleep, I had to make sure that I'm not doing that to nobody else's home. But see, what they're, that, failing, what they're failing yes. to realize is, one, as a woman of God, now, you can come in that way, but what are you as the leader teaching? Because the Bible does speak about modest apparel. So two, you need to be teaching them that first of all, as we just spoke about, that this man had a problem with porn. Whatever a, a leader or male in the yeah. church had some type of problem with either porn or sex or whatever, that he's trying to get himself, uh, you know, his flesh under subjection. But you walking in there, with all this, and, and for me, if it's not for sale, take the sign down. First of all, <laughs> I'm <like> sorry. <laughs> you looking and you wearing the wrong thing to church. Did you get your, your would you wear that to work? If you wear it to work, nine oh, times out of ten, they're going to write you up, give you a pink slip, do something. So you home. already know, mm -hmm. oh, no, I got to have my coins, so you're not going to wear that attire to work. But then you come to church with it. Really? But you're saying, come at no, uh, uh, no, come as you are. That's for your inner man, not the outer. And as I said, you're wondering why you can't keep a man because you treat yourself like a piece of meat. So when he treats you like a piece of meat, you don't understand. Sometimes the pastor treat them like a piece of meat. And I have, listen, I, I quit church like I done gave up. I lost count. Okay, that's how much time I quit church. Went to church, here come a pastor. Pastor that's been pastoring for 20-something years trying to sing the wrong song to me. Here come the deacons. Here come the this one. Here come the that one. And I felt like if they're men of God, why were they coming at me like that? And that's why what? They're undelivered. They weren't delivered. They weren't in the right place. But at the same time, I wasn't helping the situation either. They had a problem. What I did was expose that problem. Yes. And then I felt like nobody should tell me, tell me anything because, you know, just leave me alone. But see, that's the wrong way of us to think about it. And it's all about kingdom building. We have to work on ourselves. And you hit the nail on the head when you said, come as you are, because that's what we use. God say, come as you are. And then he said, be re-transformed by the renewing of your mind through the Change. word of God. Change. change you can't read the bible and don't change if you're not changing and i'm gonna show you now because i don't be playing this is the bible if you are not reading the bible you are not going to change i used to listen i used to curse so much in my teen years i used to make up my own curse words okay i think i would have published a dictionary <laughs> on cursing i used to just and i'm country and jamaican and i just mix up everything and i just invented words <laughs> okay but i'm telling you <laughs> when i started reading the bible and I mean, really read the Bible to get to know the Lord for real. That started to chip away from me to where I don't even have the desire. And it was times I slip up and I curse. And I used to be like, oh, why it sound like that to me? It sounds so weird. And then I start saying it don't even taste right. Ah, and that's what Jesus. the word do. My God. My God. But see, Jesus. as I said, mm. Mm. <laughs> we mm -hmm. have to go. I, I, I truly believe. And everyone, uh, it don't take, oh, yes, it do. Because what we're it doing does. right now is not working. It's not working. What we're doing right now is not working. We are losing too many people. And then we're yet not, you know, we're not doing anything to even win the souls that are lost. We're losing the ones that are in the house. But yet we're doing nothing to win the ones that are out, out there in the world. What type of evangelism are we doing? I guess we're going to send those, mm, oh God, we're going to send someone that's dressed a certain way out there to win a soul, and she's going to look at her and say, uh, how you going to tell me something, your dress shorter than mine, or your boobs all out, really? Oh, they're not going to talk about that part. But are we, are we truly, you know, are we doing any type of 
outreach and evangelism. Are we? My God. Mm. Are we? Mm -mm -mm. And that's key. That's key. Are we winning any souls? But at, at this point, it seems like we're losing more than we're gaining. Even the pastors are committing suicide, and I've never seen and hear about so much people in the church that's committing suicide. And I do believe that the same God that was there in the lion's den with Daniel, the same God that was by the Red Sea when he took Moses them out of Egypt, that same God that was in the fiery furnace, the same God on the day of Pentecost that showed his face, I do believe I don't know about anybody else, but I believe in everything inside of my soul that that's the God I'm serving or I'm not serving no dead God. I'm telling you, if he's not alive and well, I mean, I'm going to find something else to do because that's the God I'm serving. And if he can do what he did then and he's hey. doing a lot more, he can Come do on. it now. Come and on. I do believe that in the church, it should be a safe place. It shouldn't be. Yes. Listen, I know pastors and people that I've met and God sent me to a church. And I told a pastor that I saw the, the uh, 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 um, a choir of God marching through your church and rooting stuff up. And I told the girl that brought me to the church. And again, I'm the crazy prophet. So guess yes. what happened? Less than six months later, he molested her and ended up in prison. So I'm not talking about no stuff that's a far away that you can't see. Stuff that's happening right in our backyard. Do you, do you see what I'm telling you? And I don't believe that should happen if we serve the real Holy Ghost that can stop bullets. The real Holy Ghost that can stop burning building. I mean. <laughs> well, right about now, the church is powerless, honey. It is powerless. Jesus. As I just said, nobody's getting saved. No one's getting healed. No one's getting delivered. No one's getting set free. When you can have leaders that are walk over someone that desires, mm. you know, to be free, and they'll walk over them, walk past them. Let me guess. Mm. Okay, that's that's not in my uh, that that's not in my league, or I'm too big, or I'm too grand, or maybe it's just that you don't have any power, no authority. God, mm. Jesus, you don't have any power or, in, or any authority. Mm. Because right now the church is, the church is dying. Hey God, is dying. you got folks coming in the, into church, yeah. and they're being she sent right back out the door. Someone could walk in the door just because she don't look like we look or smell right. You're gonna run her out the church. But see, the thing is, in this hour, you, you better get yourself together. You better be able to see in the spirit because you may be entertaining an angel. Mm. And you may be going through a test. God just may be testing you to sit. Mm, mm. Oh God. And a lot of them don't see it. Mm. They don't see it. No mm. power, no authority to get no one healed, set free and delivered because you need to be healed, set free and delivered because you caught up into your mess, but you don't think anybody can see. Mm. So therefore, as you mm. say it, th that's mm. why it's a, uh, as you say, the real prophets need to come forth. The God need to bring us forth. Because right about now, what's out here now? Okay, really? I, I don't like putting my mouth on no one. That's not who I am and what I do. But one thing I do know, warning does come before destruction. Right. It comes mm. before destruction. Mm. God. So the thing is now, we have to get on our faces. And we got to get back on the wall. And we got to do some serious praying. And that's where the tell you about this, from. this real thing that the Lord showed me. And I saw it so clearly. The Jezebel spirit is running rapid in the church. But guess what, okay. it, what, what it's being accompanied by? The incubus and the succubus spirit is being accompanied by. Because it, he's showing us Jezebel, is, she's not strong enough. So therefore, that ancient spirit Yep. has been summoned mm. incubus and succubus something that'll follow you home that will seduce you while you sleep and it's after the leaders if it gets the head the body mm. Jesus my God my God he's See, on his the... job but are we on our job mm. that's the, the thing on Satan his job Jesus. is to kill steal and destroy. 
And what mm. we always say, oh, the devil, the devil, the devil. It's not the devil. It's his little imps, fallen angels. That's who it is, the little imps. And if you cannot handle what an imp is putting on you, you surely can't handle the devil. But mm. the key is, stop saying the devil so much and think about, really, get your mind right. Get yourself mm. cleaned up. Get your flesh under subjection. If you stop fleeting your flesh, your flesh will die. Mm. Mm. And you better recognize these spirits that are My setting God. you up for the okie dokes to destroy not just your home, your marriage, and the church. Mm. My God, Jesus. You and you know what? You recognize and realize because they are mm -hmm. roaming the earth and they're on assignment. Mm. They're on assignment to do what it has been sent to do. And if it does not succeed, then another imp is sent. See, mm. someone like ourselves, what we fail to realize is that we'll go through a trial and test. But first of all, have you thought about asking yourself first, is it me? Right. Is it God? Or right. Is it Satan that, oh God. Help My me. God. Is it me? Huh? Is it God that's testing me? trying to teach me something, trying to get mm. something in my head. Because see, the thing is, even when God tests us, if we don't get it the first time, it's coming back around until you get it. So when it come again, oh, I got this. Uh-uh, I ain't going to fail mm. this time. Mm -hmm. Or is it the devil trying to destroy you, take you up out of here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the first person he's coming after, they're failing to relax. It's not just the music department. It's any kind of leader because Satan was the top leader himself. He was the top angel. Mm. Mm. He was the top angel. So anybody that tried to take his place in praise, worship, anything such as this, he's coming after you <laughs> with God. everything he has. Jesus. And, and our prayers, really? They're not even reaching the ceiling. Right. My God. Folks around here, peak of Ashunda dancing all over the place. But as soon as you walk out the door, whatever was plaguing you is waiting on you when you get up out of there. Mm. See, we got to learn how to do warfare. You got to learn how to do spiritual warfare. You got to take your life back. You got to learn how to fight the devil go in the middle of the air, meet him up there and let him know, mm -mm, not my house, not my child, not my marriage, not my job, not my ministry, not my church. Mm. Jesus, my God, mm. but we're and that's too busy, mm -hmm. we're too busy teaching the American way and not teaching the Bible, the word, the truth. My God, Jesus, mm. and all this the church is a business, the devil lives a lot. We're turning it into a business. The Bible says, Money can shell and will be the root of all evil if, if you what. Oh, God, help me. Mm. What about My the God. souls? Right. What about the souls? Right. Our sons and daughters are out there in the street killing each other. Our sons and daughters are out in the street on drugs. But who's going out there trying to pull them right off the street and back into the house of God, uh, into a place of safety? Oof. Right. You ride up and down the street every Sunday, Wednesday, when you got prayer meeting, you got this, that. But how many times have you stopped and offered any of the street walkers or the homeless people to the church, to the house of God? You know what? And I'm going to say this. My spirit is full right now because it's just so much that's going on in my spirit. But you hit the nail on the head. And that's the difference between power and authority. And so many people are off, off going off after the power of God and not kingdom authority. And that's why they can put a band-aid on that problem in church and the people leave and they're not set free and delivered. It takes a, a it takes authority to get those things solved. Because the devil, he's not going to stop coming after these people if we, that's laying hands, is not even right. We just going to mess it up for the people. And if we bring the people off the street and they don't even have a safe place to come, 
they're not going to stay. But see, what they're they they to realize also God. is that the same spirits will call them out. See, they plan. Some of them get right. the man hands on these folks and, and those spirits will tell you, oh, I know who you are. Ooh, mm -hmm. I know who you are. And then when they go off and tell, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. See, they plan. It's all about souls. And if it's not about souls, mm -hmm. again, sit down. Because the hour is going to come when we will have to all stand before God, naked and unashamed, but will you be able to do it? There won't be any fig leaves around. You ain't going to have no fig leaves, no nothing to be able to hide behind. But will you be able to stand behind B b behind the screen that he gonna put up before us possibly and everything that we've done in our life flashed before oh god I got that right I got that uh oh 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 mm -hmm. okay don't go to oh 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 everything that flashed before you will you be able to stand before God and say oh I, I did that but I got it right I get I did that but I made it right all the lies the deceit the <laughs> Jesus what happened to getting yourself righteous, ready, and living holy before God elevated you to such a place or position or title? Oh, my God. Hmm. Yes, Lord. Sin recognizes sin. So when your spirits come into the house and call you out, oh, God, oh, okay. Okay. Hmm. And that's what it's about to happen. You think you see certain things happening in the church. There's more to come. God is not pleased with us. How can God say that he's coming for his bride without spot, blemish, or wrinkle when we got spots, polka dots, plaids, flowers, the word is what it is. We keep changing or twisting the word to suit our sins. My God. The word of truth will stand. It don't need any help to accomplish what it, it was sent out to do. But when you... Mm, We are surely going, as leaders, going to have to give a serious account for the, the slaughtered lambs and sheep. <laughs> the blood will be on our hands. Because we're That's playing cool. church. That's what we're doing. We're playing <laughs> church. Even though the church is the people, but there are really no people in the church anymore. These houses are emptying out. Why? <laughs> Oh, God. Leading the blind. The blind leading the blind. And again, like you said, if someone comes in, up in the house to and tell the truth, oh, you can't come back. We don't want you. Mm -hmm. You, you you're the devil. The mm -hmm. You, mm -hmm. you'll make my members walk up out of here and leave and this and that. No, you will. Because, as I said, sin recognizes sin. And they failing to realize it's those closest to them that's telling their business anyway. Right. Putting them on front street. <laughs> Putting them on front street. But your sins will find you out. And they will call you out. Nothing that you do in the dark will stay there. It's coming to the light. It's coming out. And right now, I'll say this. The church needs to repent. My God. We need to repent and Jesus. return back to God. We need to repent and return back to God. All these hurting people out here that won't want to, they're going through stuff and they want to know how they're going to come through. Oh, God. How am I going to get out of this thing? How am I going to come through this thing? They're hurting. Hmm. 
these people are hurting. They're crying out for help. But then you have the ones that say, I don't need your God. Or they have the ones that say, church, y'all doing the same thing we doing out here. They said they worse. They worse. I come from a family that everybody is like, I grew up hearing this slogan, church people worse than the sinners. Ooh, Jesus. They lie more, they do everything more, and that was the that was the, the slogan. So wow. it, it's real. They absolutely sit down drinking their rum, talking about how horrible the church people are and telling all of the business who did what, when, where, how, and why. Because when they think that people not seeing, people seeing, yeah. they seeing. Oh yes. When you can get people, have people. That, where is this thing? The same thing that I'm on now, but I have another one. What is this? A phone. Okay. I've said it for years that those same thing I just held up, those cell phones are going to get a lot of people in trouble. And every time I look, someone is saying, what do I do? What do I do? My leader is this, that, and the third. And you're like, well, how do you know? And the first thing they do is they do this. They hold their phone up. You never know where your members are or where your members passing by and you out of pocket and out of place and you don't think they see you. And you, you know, even though, oh, I wasn't getting drunk, I can have a drink, but you just left convocation at one of the services. But fast as you leave the service, you sitting up in a restaurant at the bar with two or three shot glasses of liquor in front of you. How do you think your member is going to handle that? <sighs> You done rolled out of town because you think you're being slick. <laughs> but you don't know your member on their job has been sent to that same city and state on their job. And you sitting up in a place with another woman. With your lips all over her face and everything. Really? And they sitting there just like this. Taking pictures. And they like... See this right here? And you're like, oh, God. Really? My you God. don't think your members see you. What happened to the word holiness? It's been redefined. Oh, Pete, the world, people, the church. The, I mean, it's, it has been redefined. I mean... We can stroll down Facebook wall right now and see 50 comments that's talking about holiness and the everything and the whole everything redefining holiness. And, you know, it's that's what it is. People just redefine the word to fit their scenarios and situations. And that's why it, we are where we're at right now. And I'm in the body of Christ and I'm a church Ooh. people. No, we Christians, we church people, okay? And I spent a long time trying to say I'm I, I'm not a church people. <laughs> I'm a Christian, and it's a difference. But really, if we follow in Christ and Christ built his church and he coming back for his church, I mean, well, we might as well embrace it and say us and us try to figure out how we going to do this. How are we going to go back to the glory of God? Because, yeah, we, we, we way past the do not cross sign, so... Baby, as I said, we as the body of Christ need to repent and we need to return back to God. Second Corinthians says, if my people, and we all keep saying we've been called or we chosen, but what does the scripture say? If my people who are called by my name would humble. Yes, Lord. Where's the humbleness? Everybody's so arrogant, so pompous, mm -hmm. they're unreachable, they're untouchable. So if you all of this, how are you winning souls? Oh, you know, oh, I can just open my mouth, sing a song, or throw a word across the diocese, the pulpit, and they're going to go crazy. Really? Really? God. But all of that, all of that word you so-called have is being accompanied by your, mm, by your wickedness. We as, the shepherds need to consider their, their ways of how they're, how they're tending to their flock. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. What they're feeding their flock. <laughs> Meaning, wow. don't change not one word and teach the entire Bible. Don't skip over some of the books. Teach the whole the whole Bible in, in its entirety. Stop oh skipping over certain parts of it because you don't want to talk or speak on certain topics because, oh, they'll take their tithes and leave. <laughs> That's between them and God. You keep it holy. Oh you God. teach the truth. You teach the word of God. My God. We God doesn't so... force himself on no anyone, does he? Nope. It's our choice. You give us the truth, and we you let us decide if we want to accept it. But give us the truth. Huh. You can't give us the truth, but live a lie. Right. And you can't give us a lie and live the truth. Right. It's not right. going to work. Right. Oh, God. This is too much. <laughs> this is definitely too much. <sighs> no one, as, as I said, the key words, the three words, heal, separate, and deliver. No, I, I don't see any deliverance taking place in, in the houses anymore. Yeah. I don't see anybody on their face Ooh. tearing for the Lord. I don't see anyone laying down anything, telling the Lord, mm, God, oh, clean me up, clean me out. I laid my sins on the altar not to ever pick back up on them again. Right. I surrender. I yield. Huh. What are we doing? What are we doing? This is why I told the Lord in the midst of my mess. Broken, how you say, broken, disgusted, couldn't be trusted, whatever. <laughs> Running around doing everything under the sun. But I told him, I made him a vow. I said, if you get me out of this, I'm going where you say go. I'm doing what you say do, and I'm definitely going to say what you tell me to say. My life, I value. And to me, can't nobody take this life but him. That's why I don't have fear in going out there snatching the, the daughters. Some of the ones that they feel that no one loves me. No one cares. Right. So when I get those calls, 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning, I don't think nothing of it. I get out of my bed. And if anybody's listening to me, that's from the Atlanta area, Stewart, Cleveland, Metropolitan, all over there in the A, in the Swats and all that, to go snatch their daughters off the street. Why? Because they got a taste of sex, drugs, alcohol. <sighs> because they were violated. When the devil gets bold enough, to, oh God. The man was in the grocery store. He offered the lady $200 for her child. Now tell me that wasn't a bold spirit, a demonic spirit. This is what's plaguing the earth. This is what's roaming the earth. He's using sexual sins. And, and, and we can't see it. Every time you turn on the news, somebody's raped, molested, or uh, again, me too, me too, this one, uh, hundreds of women's coming forth on this one, 30 and 40 on this one. This uh, really sexual sins, perversion, lust. It's all in the word of God. It's prayer time. The intercessors 
the prayer warriors. Get on your post. It's time to get back on your post. Get on the wall. Get on your face. Don't get up until God release you. We're the well-in mothers. Let's go. Some folks are saying it doesn't take, it, it's going to take all of this and then yes, some. It's going to take all of this. And then some. So every one of you that God delivered you out of something that should have killed you, that say you got some, some power and authority, let's go. Jesus. Rise up. It's, it's prayer time. Everything that you went through in your life wasn't about you or for you. It was for somebody else. Reach back. If you were raped, reach back. If you were molested, reach back. Beaten, reach back. Drugs, alcohol, whatever it was, clubbing, porno, whatever sin that led you to the altar, reach back. If you say you're healed, set free, and delivered, and you've been called and or chosen, and really that's all of us. That's all of us. If you got breath in your body, there's a calling on your life. There's ministry in you to stop and offer Christ to somebody. If he brought you through and out of it, stop over. Witness to somebody and let them know. I, uh, uh, been there, done that, baby. I was caught up in my sin. I was doing the same thing you doing. As my mother would always say, tell the truth and shame the devil. But if you're not bold enough to stop and tell somebody of the goodness or to share your testimony, you ain't free. You haven't been delivered. And you're surely not healed. So there has to be some residue somewhere. Because I can talk about it freely. That's why I can reach back and tell these young girls that when they start out cussing me out and when I break them off something, when I tell them no boo-boo, Go beyond the, the, the clothes and the, the makeup and the hair and everything. Baby, I was you once upon a time myself. And then they look at you and they say, you? Yes, ma'am. I, I done been raped twice. I had this to happen to me. I done ran them streets. I done did this. I done did that. But if God made, hey, Shonda, oh, sorry. If God made a way of escape for me, he has no respect of person. That he can't, oh God. They just need to know that they have a chance. To right. Live. Right. Speak life into stage. Speak life into somebody. Until so, oh. Uh, so something happened, my God. Oh God. There's too many people out there dying on our watch. <laughs> Not on my watch. And that's why I say, if God didn't give you this ministry, then what is your ministry? If God didn't give you this ministry, what is, what, what is it? What is it that God healed, set free, and delivered you from? Drinking, smoking, crack. Whatever it, whatever it was. As I said, that thing should have took you out. It should have killed you. But if he delivered you, then show some signs of deliverance. Show some signs. Each one, reach one. Reach back. Jesus. Reach back. The churches should be overflowing. Should be overflowing. Every crackhead that used to be on crack should be out there pulling every crackhead off the street. Every ex-pimp should be out there pulling the, uh, these so-called pimps off the street. Every prostitute. That you, if you're an ex-prostitute, you should be out there on the street talking to these girls. Every drug dealer. Hello? Even if you've been to prison, 
go out there and talk to these young men and let them know that's not where you want to be. Speak some life into these people, into their looking like dead situations. Speak life into them again. Breathe life back into these people. I'm on a mission. Every young lady that's either been raped, molested, sexually abused, beaten, battered, been there, done that too. There's hope. If you're still alive, you're not a victim, you're a survivor. Just know and understand God loves you. And the same way he made a way for me without a title, Marie. He's got you covered. You might be burdened down, but come on to me, he said. Yes, Lord. Uh, uh. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Guys, do you have questions? If you have questions or comments, leave them in the comment section. If we are not live and you are watching the playback, go ahead and um, listen. This, this, this here, I mean... <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's just a reality check for us and a wake up call and just uh, what you say. You know how we said, "Search me, O oh Lord, and know my heart." I pray, try me, and see if there's any wicked ways in me. Now, if you see some uprooted, this is one of those moments where we have to go back to the soul winning, go back to the foundation, go back into the reach back, and go back and even remember why we're even here, why God even brought us out and that's what this is tonight so if you have issues that you want to talk about you've been there you're going through it your child is going through it because i mean there's moms that their child is going through it they don't know how to go through it i will post judah's dove page up on our page and on our website elevation tv network.com and you guys can go to the gifted directory and you will see judah's dove okay reach out you can reach out to reach out okay reach out reach out to me reach out to to um prophetess marie reach out and we will get you what you need get you connected but you don't have to go through it alone and a lot nope. of times when people are going through this the devil and i'm telling you because yes. i know it will tell you the shame the guilt everything to kill yes. yourself it's not worth it hey jesus let me tell yeah. you he, what the, what you are looking at now the devil will never tell you that is that that's to come you always feel like that situation that you'll never come up out of it you'll never be renewed and restored you'll never truly be free and that's a lie that's not true the blood of jesus will set you free so don't try to go through it alone if you are not strong enough mentally spiritually if you don't have a strong support system reach out and that's why we are here leave it in the inbox don't put your personal business on the facebook wall because we want to honor your privacy and confidentiality my god jesus we're gonna pray we're gonna pray for you guys because you know what we don't cut open some wounds and um yeah, we're going to pray. We're going to pray for God to just fix that because we don't want to leave you here wounded either, home broken. We're going to pray for you because in the end, that's what you need, prayer. My and he's God. a healer. Yes. He's a healer. Trust me. As I said twice, Ooh, and I'm going to let her pray. Twice. I was raped twice. Yes, Lord. For times such as now that I've, I've been chosen and called unto you to help you to get healed, to get set free, and to be delivered, to live a whole and wholesome life yet again. You can, you shall, and you will live beyond being a survivor. You're not a victim. You're a survivor. You're still here. And there's reason and there's purpose in your life. Now, I don't yes. know who I'm talking to. You've been through this, and God is calling you forward to do, to, to do some work, to reach back. You should be stagnant no, no longer. Move forward in the things of God. And if there's help that you need, I'm here. Jesus. Get on the phone. 
See, I, I'm the type that, see, I, I couldn't get any help. I still can't get any help. But I told God, you'll provide. Every time I try to get some help, so for us, oh, for such a small as a cup of coffee, send me $5 from your Starbucks coffee. Just, you know, you know, sacrifice. You don't get any help, but you receive the phone calls. But I told God, like I told him, for you I live and for you I'm going to die. But I'm going to do what you've called me to do. Again, I'm going to do what you say do. I'm going where you say to go. And I'm going to say what you tell me to say. My God. So, I don't know who I'm speaking to. But you should live and not die. Yes, not Lord. on my watch. Yes, Lord. Not on my watch. I speak life unto you. My God. The spirit of depression be destroyed yes. now, not broken. Made in the name of Jesus. Be mended and put back together. Right, but I right. speak, decree, and declare that spirit yes, has Lord. to go of depression, that yes, suicide of the spirit, be in the gone in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. And that you should never return again. My God. Yes, Lord. You should live and not die. You yes, will Jesus. not commit suicide. My you God. will be whole. You will be healed. You will be delivered. You will mm -hmm. be set free. Jesus. You will live a wholesome life. Yes, Lord. You will go to college. You will own a business. You will mm -hmm. be in ministry. You will be married. Mm -hmm. You will have children. Your marriage will be successful. Mm -hmm. Who am I talking to that you're having mm -hmm. problems in your marriage because of some infidelities because of what happened to you in your past? Yes, hey, hey, Jesus. You hit it. You hit the nail on the, the head. Yes. I felt that. Mm -hmm. healed, I heard that. Be delivered Jesus. and be set free. In the name God. of Jesus. Yes. Mm. Lucy. Yeah. Jesus. It's your number whole side. Lucy. You will be free to do the things of God. My God. You will live a wholesome life. You will be happy. Jesus. You will be successful. Yes, Lord. There is life beyond what has happened to you. So you go back and you tell mom, grandma, and all, no. What we say the silent movement, the silent movement no more, the silent voices no more. You open your mouth and you speak. You get this thing out of you because this is your first step of your deliverance. This is the first step to your deliverance. Open your mouth and speak about it. Talk about it. Tell yourself, yes, it happened, but I'm a survivor. And he delivered you and brought you through it for a reason and a purpose. Yes, Greatness Lord. is in you. My God. Yes, Lord. He's calling you and he's calling you out. Yes, Lord. Get up off that pew and begin to be used in the house of God. My God. Mm. Stop yes, hiding. Lord. Stop hiding. Be healed. Be delivered and be set free. Yes, Lord. God's going to get the glory out of everything that's ever happened to you. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but there's several of you that's watching. And I know this is going to be watched by numerous people. And if you've been through it, also, whether you are male or not, be healed, be delivered. Be set free. Amen. Yes, Lord. My God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We glorify you. We magnify you, Lord God. We thank you for your presence.
Lord, we thank you for your presence, Lord. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are worthy to be praised. King of King and Lord of Lord. Alpha, the Omega, Lord, you are the beginning and the end. Lord, we invite your presence in here tonight, Lord God. And as your fire of the Holy Ghost flow, Lord God, I ask you that every prayer that was prayed, every person that's listening, every person that you ordained to listen to this, Lord God, that the fire of the living God will go deep down inside of their core and uproot every seed, Lord God, that was planted that's not like you. Mm. Jesus, eradicate the hands of the enemy and annihilate the plot and the plans of the enemy over their lives, over their marriage, over their children's life, over their churches. Lord, bring us back to a place where we can talk about the church of the living God, where we can invite people to the house of the living God, because you said, do not forsake the assembly of the saints. And Lord, if you said it is so, then it is so that everything shall pass away before your word fall death lord god before your word be void and father in the name of jesus i me i come before you tonight oh god you said acts and it shall be given and lord i ask you to send forth the, the spirit of peace, Lord God, that every broken, every wounded, every victim, Lord God, every person that was the prey, Lord God, that prayed on the victim, Lord God, I pray for deliverance right now in the name of Jesus. I pray for healing right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let them see themselves through your eyes. Lord, there's none like you. Oh, God, there's none like you. And we thank you for every word that was spoken tonight, oh, God. And I pray that you'll give them the boldness, Lord, that you will strengthen their core, Lord God, so they shall re resist the devil, so he shall flee from them, so they shall stand firm and speak thus to the Lord. Father, we give you all the honor, the praise, and the glory now and forevermore. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. And if you are on here tonight, this morning, wherever you are in the world on your time frame, and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, now is the time. Confess with your mouth that I know that I am a, repeat, I know that I am a sinner and I need a Savior. And I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior and that he died for me and that he's coming back again. And through this, I shall be saved. And if you pray that prayer, find you a Bible believing church and go there. And if you need to find a ministry, find a church, go to the gifted directory. Now we update it by city, by state, by country, by region. So you can find one in your area and go get the help that you need. My God, Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Prophetess Baker, I want to thank you for coming on with us tonight. I want to thank you for being transparent. I want to thank you for just letting the Lord use you tonight because I truly, the presence of the Lord is here. And I just honor you for even speaking, just speaking to see it, the Lord tonight. So thank you. You're most welcome. You're most welcome. This is, again, who I am and what I do. And as I said, I made God a vow, and, and, and I, I vow to keep my vow. Right. It's not about me. It's all about God's people. Right. Amen. Amen. Is there anything else you want to share with us before we go? Oh, wow. Mm. I'm just in a good place right now because it is my prayer that someone at the sound of our voice knows that God loves them and that mm -hmm. there is life beyond being as what I said, we're not victims, we're survivors. And it's time for, for them to come out of the corner for hiding. But it is definitely my prayer and absolutely my prayer that more agencies or you know 
I, it's my prayer really that I could take Judah Dove worldwide. Because for me, I see, and as I said, I'm not speaking against any other agency, but for me, we wholeheartedly want to get to the root of things. And we want this thing and want everyone that needs and desire help to be helped. Because, you know, to know from, you know, a victim or survivor standpoint what it's like to be taken advantage of. Amen. So, as I said, yes, I, I, I preach, I pray, I prophesy. But for me, I, this is the greatest joy for me when it comes to outreach, helping the babies, mentoring these young girls and these young women, and letting them know that your life is ahead of you. Yes. Your life is ahead of you. So for those of you, if you would, as she said, the website is judadove.org. I may be at a distance, but I will talk to you even over the phone. The website is judadove.org. All the information is there. And if you would like, as I said, any donation is, is never too small. This right. will help us to continue to help others. And as I said, we, we quite often, I quite often receive phone calls 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. I can't sleep, they'll tell me. I'll get out of my bed, I'll get up, I'll, I'll talk to these survivors. Oh because I know where they are. But we need your help, we need your support because yes, we're trying to carry not only the gospel from city to city, but state to state, but we're trying to open another door here in Atlanta. We're trying to become um, more accessible. You know, our office was out in Kennesaw and now we're trying to relocate our office to somewhat closer area to downtown Atlanta so everyone within the metro area uh, will be able to possibly get on a bus and come over and get the services that they need. So please go to our website and, and become a partner. And if you're in the Atlanta area, become a volunteer. Come walk with us so you can see and witness for yourself. And especially those of you, as I said, if you've experienced anything in your life, remember, God delivered you for a reason. Now is your time to reach back. God Amen. bless you. Amen. And guys, thank you for watching. God bless you truly. I am blessed. It was a blessing tonight. It was just, I mean... I'm just happy. I'm happy. I'm just so <laughs> I'm like, I'm so happy tonight. I'm just in a great place right now. And remember, guys, and I'm wearing my, my war shirt, right? We don't quit. We elevate. <laughs> so, <laughs> every so often, you know, you got to wear your war shirt. <laughs> to just remind yourself that we don't quit. We elevate. So thank you for watching. God bless you guys. Remember, when life hit you, what? We don't quit. We elevate. So I will see you guys next week. Until then, you can head on over to our website for all of your faith, faith <laughs> tools. <laughs> and I'll see you guys again. Bye. God bless you guys. Have a great God bless you. morning. <laughs> Bye. God bless you. Thank you.